driving what is quickly becoming my favorite combination. It's a 6.2 Gen 5 L86 with an 8 speed. This particular Jeep has an Atlas II in it. It's an early Jeep. I think it's a 7 or 8, but it's really clean. It's got a trail dash, navigation, all the good stuff. This Jeep feels very diesel-like. It's got so much torque, and the sound of it even sounds a little bit diesel-ish. But it's not like a gas motor when you give it throttle and you have to let it wind up. This thing pulls off the line like a diesel truck. Driving this thing is kind of like driving a Duramax or a Cummings in a pickup truck. You were idling here at about 500 RPM, if that, and you just give it a little throttle, and it launches the weight of this JK like it's a sports car. And you can feel that 8-speed using the gears to its best advantage, launching all this heavy weight, probably 800 or 900 pounds of wheels and tires, when the 8-speed uses that diverse gearing, it makes this vehicle feel a lot lighter than it really is. Now we're a four-cylinder right now. So let's talk a little bit about why these Gen 5s work so well. Well, the JK is heavy. It's unaerodynamic. Basically, it takes a lot of energy to move a JK. It's not a 3,200-pound Toyota that's streamlined. What the Gen 5 motors offer is exactly what the JK needs, and that is diverse gearing, lots of torque and when we're talking about torque we're talking about almost 400 foot-pounds of torque right off idle up to the the red line with the L86 and 300 or 350 off idle all the way to red line on the L83 and you really can't compare that to a Gen 4 or a Hemi or other engines because while they might put out similar torque figures and horsepower figures their curves are shaped like pyramids. This curve is flat as a dinner plate almost, which means you have that torque and horsepower all the way across the band, mostly the torque. And what that translates into is moving your JK down the road efficiently. What we have here is technology. And the Gen 4 engines are awesome engines. What the Gen 5 engines did is they kind of took what the Gen 4 engines had and expanded on it. So they took VVT and turned it into continuous VVT. They took the six-speed, added a couple of ge gears, and made it more diverse. They made the engine as efficient as they could, not only through the combustion chambers, but direct injection. One of the amazing things about these Gen 5 truck engines is they run on regular gas. And to get this kind of performance in a Gen 4 engine, you really need to run premium gas. So what it really is, is an evolutionary process of the Gen 4 engine to make it more efficient and more powerful. And I'm starting to realize just how much benefit the Gen 5 engines have. What's amazing about not only the Gen 5 motors, but most of the modern engines, is not only how much power they have, but how efficient they are. If you look back even 20, 30 years, I grew up basically in the 70s and 80s and began doing engine swaps in the late 1970s and we were getting 160, 180, 200 horsepower out of the V8s at the time getting 12, 13 miles to the gallon put headers on them, cams, carburetors, open the carburetors up today we're getting 400 plus horsepower with fuel economy numbers we couldn't even dream of we also have to work within the confines of what's available to us. For example, we can't run lean crews in North America. Lean crews was a technology that leaned the mixture out more than stoichiometric, and it works. And you can pick up a couple of miles to the gallon with lean crews, but there's a downside to lean crews, and that is NOx emissions. And if we then go after the NOx emissions with after exhaust treatments like diesels do, we're just going to choke the motor down. So. There's technologies out there that can yield significant results, but we are constrained from using them. So given the set of requirements that we have, which is longevity, durability, economy, efficiency, these things are approaching the best that we're going to get, at least with, with the current technology. And remember, GM has to design these engines 
to go the distance. They have to go 100, 200, 1,000 miles plus. If that wasn't a concern, if this was a short-term engine, they could get even more. Uh, we have done a little bit of exploring with the tunes on these Gen 5s, and there's a lot more available than GM is opening them up to. And most of you know we like to stick with basically factory tunes, and we've done a couple of builds recently with hot rod tunes or over-the-counter tunes, and you can really see the difference in the drivability and the emissions and just the overall experience with a, a hot rod tune isn't the same as an OE tune. So GM has to build these things to last in any environment, whether it's zero degrees out in Newfoundland or 120 degrees out here in the southwest. And you're not going to meet all those demands and get much better efficiency or performance out of any other engine today in my opinion. Yes, you can go to double overhead cam, you could phase the, the intake and the exhaust cams independently and gain a little bit here or there, but given the overall picture, and that is the longevity, the durability, and the performance and economy, these Gen 5 motors are pretty much a marvel. The transmissions, the 8 speeds, and the soon to be 10 speed are going to add incrementally to that, and we're looking forward to actually doing uh, an LT4 which is a supercharged version of this. And my experience with the LS9 and the LSA was those engines actually yielded very good economy for the power because once you go into boost, it is like having a larger engine. And it's not like having a 3.6 or a 3.8 with a one bar operating system fool to think it's a two bar operating system. These are fully manufacturer supported two and three bar operating systems. So they run pretty much like a normally aspirated engine. So we're off the mountain on the highway. We went to two places to wheel today. This Gen 5 is just awesome off-road. With the amount of torque it has and the 8-speed, it's like cheating off-road. Here we are at just over 70 miles an hour, 1800 RPM. What these engines are going to offer, the Gen 5s that is, is versatility.